Hello everybody and welcome back. I am back. It's been a few months since I've uploaded any sort of content. I've uh, been super busy this summer. I had some people ask if I was going to drop an NFL prediction video, so here we are. Last year, my over-under predictions for the 2021 NFL season, I went 20, 11, and 1. Um, so I almost hit two thirds of the over under totals. If I would have bet on them, I think I would have made a decent amount of money, but I'm not sure because I didn't actually do it. So I'm going to push my luck again, see if I can do even better this year. So here we are, Madden 22. We're going to jump into a franchise mode. We're also going to simulate the season like we did last year. Um, I am taking control of the Texans because I'm going to have to move Deshaun Watson because there's no way he's going to be playing this season. So what I'm going to do is go team by team here, give you my prediction of the, if they're going to go over or under their projected win total set by DraftKings Sportsbook, hashtag not sponsored. So we'll check out the teams, we'll check out their schedule and come up with the total. And then after we go through each and every team, we are going to simulate the season, even though last year they had... Madden had the Bengals winning the Super Bowl, even though they were one of the worst teams in the league. So it's not really reliable to predict the actual outcome of the season. It's just gonna be more of a funny thing, I'm assuming. So here we are, Chicago Bears. It's a new era in Chicago with Justin Fields at quarterback, at least so we thought. Um, it turns out Andy Dalton is still going to start for them. Even Madden has Justin Fields rated higher than Andy Dalton. So I don't see what they're doing here. I feel like Justin Fields is ready to go. He had a pretty solid preseason. So here we are, looking at the Bears' schedule. Week 10 bye week. I think going into the bye week, I only see at least two games for sure that they're going to win. There's going to be some tough ones against the Rams, Browns, even the Raiders. I think that would be a good game. But Packers, Bucks, 49ers, Steelers. Ooh. Um, let's, let's go ahead and say they'll win about four games going into their bye week. I have a feeling they'll win some of those tweeners. After the bye week, it doesn't really get much better. Uh, keep in mind, we do have an extra week this season, so the teams will be playing 17 games versus 16. They should definitely sweep the Lions. Um, the Cardinals kind of fell off at the end of last season, so they may or may not get that one. And then the Giants, that also could be another tweener. So uh, I honestly have, at most, the Bears getting about six wins, especially if Justin Fields... Um, if he doesn't take over right away, I think they'll struggle. And if he takes over, he might have some rookie growing pains. So I could see the Bears going for about six wins, which is under their projected win total of seven and a half games. Next up, we have the Madden 21 simulation Super Bowl champion, the Cincinnati Bengals, who only finished with an actual win total of four games last season. So Madden was nowhere close to being right about that. But the Bengals, I think, got a little better this offseason. Um, of course, we didn't count on Joe Burrow going down with a knee injury in the middle of the year last year, but he should be back ready to go. I do think he's going to have um, a little bit of trust issues with his offensive line because, as you can see just by the ratings here, not very good. But other than that, like I said, the team, I think, did get a little bit better, so let's go see how they do. So I could almost guarantee that the Bengals will finish last in their division this season. I mean, just looking at their first nine games before their bye week, I think they might be able to get the Jets, the Lions, the Jaguars, maybe. Um, I think they'll win. They could win two or three of those games, and then maybe they'll win one of them that they're not supposed to. So I, I could have them at three wins going into week 10. After that, though, it gets a little bit rough. They play all four of the AFC West opponents, which I think might be too tough for them. And then uh, there's no game that I feel like super confident that they're going to win. But um, even if they won two, and I even if they won two, that puts them at five wins for my prediction, and it's under their projection of six and a half wins for the season. Up next, we have the Buffalo Bills, a team that I thought would do pretty well last season. Um, I did draft Josh Allen on my fantasy team last year, and he was beyond amazing. He led me to a fantasy title, so shout out to Josh Allen. The Bills didn't really undergo any significant changes in the offseason. Their running game is still a little bit out of whack, but they have one of the best receiving cores. I believe they just picked up Emmanuel Sanders. Um, I do see this team contending in the AFC once again this year. The Bills have a week seven bye week, and they do have... Um, at least a couple tough matchups in the Chiefs and the Titans. Um, I think they could easily be 5-1 and one going into their bye week. 
After that, their schedule remains pretty easy. I do think they'll dominate the AFC East this year. I could see them going undefeated unless the Dolphins surprise in one of the games, which I don't think is likely. But honestly, through week 13, I have them at 11 and one. I would have them losing to the Buccaneers. And even if they lost one more game to put them at 14 and three, that's way over the projected win total of 11 games. And I could easily see them dominating this easy schedule that they have this year. We're moving on to the Denver Broncos here. Um, I'll be the first to say as a Chief fan, I think each and every team in the AFC West got better this season. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. They get Vaughn Miller returning from injury, which is huge for them. And they have a little bit of a quarterback dilemma of their own with Teddy Bridgewater being named the starter over Drew Locke, which I'm surprised about because Teddy Bridgewater, although he's been consistent in his career, you know what you're going to get out of him versus Drew Locke. He's shown flashes of being pretty good in the NFL. I'm surprised that they're not taking a chance on him this year, though. The defense is absolutely loaded this year, which means if their offense can click, they might win quite a few games. The Broncos have a week 11 bye week. I think they have a really good shot at starting 3-0 this year. After that, things get a little bit tough. I could see them splitting the season series against the Raiders, possibly. And then I could see them winning at least one of these last four games. So going into their bye week, I have them sitting at five wins. So going into the last part of the schedule here, um, they do play the Chiefs two times. I think the Chiefs will be able to handle them both times. Um, they will split, like I said, they'll split the series against the Chargers and the Raiders. So the Raiders will get one and the Chargers will get one here. And then the Lions and Bengals, I think, will be two winnable games for them. So that puts them at eight wins, which is under the eight and a half projected win total. Up next is the Cleveland Browns, and I'll go ahead and throw out my first bold prediction of this video. The Browns are going to make the AFC Championship game. I mean, their team was good last year. They got even better in this offseason. I mean, I think they have the best defensive line, or one of the best defensive lines in the league between them and Washington. Um, the two-headed running back duo of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt is unstoppable and if Nick Chubb can stay healthy all year I think that gives them the opportunity to win more games. Odell's coming off of an injury too. Uh, they still won 11 games last season with two of their star players hurt. The Browns are in a tough AFC North division this year and they don't have a bye week all the way until week 13. So after losing the season opener to the Chiefs I could see a stretch where they maybe win their next seven, eight, nine, ten games. Which the Cleveland Browns, if you think about it, them being at ten and one or ten and two going into their bye week, that's just absurd. But I think it's possible. This is an interesting setup here where they have the Ravens on Sunday night football going into their bye week, then they play the Ravens again. So I think after losing this one, they'll win the week fourteen matchup. And I could see them dropping two of the last four games. Uh, the Packers for sure. The Steelers at Pittsburgh is always tough on Monday Night Football. It's really difficult putting this high of expectations on the Cleveland Browns of all teams, but I have them at 14 wins, which is over the projected win total of 10 and a half games. This would be one of my best bets to make. Up next, we have the defending Super Bowl champions, unfortunately, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady's 44 years old. Like, we hear about that all the time, but just seeing age 44 in a video game and he's the best player on the team, that's un that's just absurd. But yeah, they brought back nearly everybody from their Super... Actually, they did bring back everybody from their Super Bowl winning team. I mean, this roster is absolutely nuts. I mean, honestly, I'd be surprised if they didn't make another Super Bowl run this year. So last season, the Buccaneers seemed to peak at the right time and just went bonkers in the last half of the season. But uh, this year, I think we'll see a little bit more consistency throughout. They have their bye week on week nine, and I think they're better than all of these teams that they play, but them starting the season eight and oh is kind of likely. But I think teams like the Rams here, and even starting with the Cowboys on Thursday night football, you know, that could cause a little bit of unpredictability, you know, the first game of the season. But, um,. Even so, I would have them start seven and one. So looking after their bye week, they have a tough one against the Bills. Um, and then keep in mind, I forgot to mention this before, but the Saints, you know, that's a potential Jameis Winston revenge game. So he could go off and I think this one at the Saints, you know, there could be potential for the Buccaneers to lose that one. But their last part of the schedule is pretty easy. I think for the most part, they'll dominate their division. Um, the two toughest games I have for them on their schedule are against the Rams and the Bills. 
So honestly, I could see this team going 15 and two, but you got to throw in a game where, you know, they lose a game where they're not supposed to lose. So I have them also at 14 wins, which is over their projected win total of 12 games. Next up, we have the Arizona Cardinals who started off hot last season and then really seemed to fall off at the end of the year. I expect Kyler Murray to continue his trend upwards and produce near MVP numbers, but keep in mind the Cardinals are playing in what's probably going to be the toughest division in all of football this season. If I had to pick one team to finish last in the NFC West this year, it would be the Cardinals, but that doesn't mean that the NFC West is going to be an absolute bloodbath. So they don't have a bye until week 12. Um, I do expect the Cardinals to be kind of in the middle of the pack in terms of the NFL standings. So I think just by looking at some of these games, like the Titans, Vikings, um, Rams, 49ers, Browns, you know, they, they, they've, got, they've got a tough start to the schedule. So the only games I see for sure that they would win would be the Jaguars, Texans, maybe the Panthers. So um, out of 11 games, only having two wins for sure, that's kind of scary. Um, I would bump that up to having five wins going into the bye week because like I said, I do think they will be in the middle of the pack. So five and six going into their bye week. After the bye week, they have the Bears and Lions. I think those are two winnable games. So that puts them at seven wins. And these last three games would be tough as well. Um, I could see them winning at most nine games, but I want to be conservative and say eight, and um, that is under the win total of eight and a half, and so I would lean towards um, eight or fewer wins for the Cardinals. The Los Angeles Chargers, like I mentioned with the Broncos, another team in the AFC West that got better this offseason. Uh, I think Justin Herbert surprised a lot of people last year with how he played. Um, so going into a second season, I expect him to take a little bit of a jump. So I don't think this team is a playoff caliber team, but um, if Austin Eckler can stay healthy this year, I think he'll have a really good season and he would help propel the Chargers to about the middle of the pack, similar to where I had the Cardinals. So the Chargers have a bye week going into week seven. Again, other than the Chiefs, I think I could see them splitting the rest of their division games. Um, so at this point, going into their bye week, I would have them sitting at two and four. Uh, I mean, every single game is pretty tough here. But um, but I do think they have the potential to win at least two of those. After this, they have a lot of middle tier teams. So I would expect them to split most of their final part of the schedule, except for the Chiefs. So if they were to split their games in the final part of the schedule, that would get them six wins. I couldn't tell you which ones I think they're going to win, but I do see them being able to go about six and five for the last part of their schedule. So either way, that puts them at eight wins, which is under the projected win total of nine and a half. I just don't see them winning more than eight games. So here we go, the best team in all of football, the Kansas City Chiefs. I think it's funny that Travis Kelsey is above Patrick Mahomes on the roster, but their star power is incredible. Um, from a roster standpoint, they aren't as loaded top to bottom as the Buccaneers, but the Chiefs should be able to make another Super Bowl run this season. So I think the Chiefs championship window is at least for another two to four seasons. Um, I think once the bulk of Patrick Mahomes contract kicks in, it's going to be tough for them to surround him with talent and to keep the talent that they currently have on their roster. They did a good job, uh, you know, stretching their money as far as they could stretch it. They improved their offensive line. Um, that was the biggest problem for the Chiefs last season when their offensive line uh, their offensive line depth was not good and it showed in the Super Bowl. So looking at the first part of their schedule here, they don't have a bye until week 12. Uh, I think three teams are going to give them the most trouble. Browns, Bills, and Packers. Even the Titans, I think, could be um, a dark horse this season. Realistically, um, out of the first 11 games, I could see them losing up to two. I don't know how likely that is though. So I would have them losing one game going into week 12. The last part of their schedule gets interesting. Um, four of their six games are against division opponents. The Raiders always give them trouble. And even the Chargers or Broncos might upset them this year. I don't think it's likely, but it could happen. I'd have them losing one of these games. I think they're all winnable games. It's the NFL, nothing's guaranteed. 
So either way, the projected win total is 12 and a half, and I think they easily go over that. I'm going to project that the Chiefs finish with 15 wins. The Indianapolis Colts. This is an interesting one. They do have a pretty solid team, but um, health concerns at quarterback already with Carson Wentz. Um, he didn't have a very good year last year in Philly, but that was with a broken down offensive line and he had uh, some injury problems. It's also going to be interesting to see how this backfield situation plays out because Marlon Mack was out for, I think, for the entire season with an injury. So I could see him splitting a lot of carries with Jonathan Taylor or if they just traded him away, I think that would be the smart move because there are teams that are now lacking running back depth. You know, we got the Jaguars and the Ravens. But I think Hines is here to stay because he's a great uh, receiving threat. So I think the AFC South is going to be the worst division in football this year. And um, I think the Titans will easily cruise away with it. The Col and the Colts are the biggest question mark. So they don't have a schedule, or they don't have a bye until week 14. So that's a long time before they get a week off. That might be a cause for concern. I do see the Colts being one of those middle in the pack teams with the potential to be even worse than that. The quarterback plays a huge question mark for them and that's going to make or break their season. Even looking at their schedule, they got a tough start to the season with the Seahawks, Rams, Titans. So I think they start 0-3. Dolphins game is going to be tough. They could start 0-4, 0-5, but if they win one of those games, you know, they're still sitting at 1-4. The Texans is an easy win. So then the, the Jets, Jaguars, and then the Texans again. So I have them at 5-8 and eight going into their bye week. Coming out of their bye week, though, uh, again, I think three questionable, I think three questionable games against the Patriots, Cardinals, Raiders. I can see them winning one of them. That puts them at six wins. And then the Jaguars would be seven. So I have them at seven wins, which is under their projected win total of nine games. And honestly, I think they could do even worse than that. The Dallas Cowboys. Another team you would have high expectations for. I know I did last year. And injuries kind of derailed that. But when's the last time the Cowboys have been relevant? I mean, come on. They still own probably the best offensive line in football. Dak Prescott, I think, could be an MVP candidate or comeback player of the year candidate. Their receiving core is loaded. Their biggest question mark is going to be their defense. And let's not forget about Ezekiel Elliott, who I think has peaked. I mean, I don't think I think his best season was his rookie season. I don't think he's going to get much better than that. So you would think the Cowboys would run away with the NFC East. But I think every year it's just a toss up of who's going to end up coming out of that division. No matter what the teams look like on paper. So they have an early bye week at week seven. Other than the Buccaneers, they have five winnable games. And uh, the Eagles, who I'll talk about in a little bit when we get to them, I think the Eagles are, have the potential to be surprising this year. I think they start off five and one. Coming out of their bye week, I mean, just looking at their, I mean, just looking at their schedule, they're lucky that they finished with only six wins last season because they have a pretty easy schedule. Yeah, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I could I could see them losing only four games a season, and that would be 13 and four, which seems way too high for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm gonna lower this number to 11 wins, which is. Still over the projected win total of nine games, but I mean, I think they have the potential to win more games, uh, but that depends on them staying healthy and not being the Dallas Cowboys we all have grown to hate. I think the Dolphins surprised a lot of people last season, with finishing with 10 wins and barely missing out in the playoffs. Um, this team does have the potential to be even better this year. I mean, they really loaded up their receiving core. Uh, by getting Will Fuller and drafting Jalen Waddle. And now with Fitzmagic out, Tua Tagovailoa is the clear starter. Um, and Jacoby Brissett is a decent backup if something happens to Tua. And the Dolphins defense last year is what won them 10 games, if we're being honest. So I think this team has a clear shot of coming out second in the AFC East and potentially contending for a playoff spot. All right, so the Dolphins are another one of the teams that don't have a bye until week 14. I don't understand why they have the bye weeks go so late. But looking at their schedule here, they do have a couple of tough games on the schedule. 
they do have a couple of tough games before their bye week. The Bills, Buccaneers, Bills again, Ravens. So that's three, four, four games that I expect them to lose for sure. Um, other than that, um, I can see the Colts giving them trouble. And who knows how Mac Jones is going to turn out for the Patriots. That's a that's something that's uh, going to be hard to decide. That's going to, the Patriots are probably going to be one of the hardest teams for me to predict. So I have the Dolphins sitting at eight and five going into their bye week, <coughs> and they do have a solid chance of winning out. So last four games for the Dolphins, I think they're guaranteed to win two of those. Um, the Saints are going to be another hard team to predict this year. But either way, if they finish at 10 wins, which is what I'm going to predict for them, that is over their total of 9.5. And, and they do have the potential to win maybe one or two more than that. The Philadelphia Eagles, this is probably the team that I was most excited to make a prediction for. I am big on Jalen Hurts this season. Um, when he came in and took over for the Eagles at the end of last year, he put up pretty impressive numbers for having a depleted offensive line. He's got a new weapon in Devonta Smith who I think is going to contend for Rookie of the Year. Even if Jalen Hurts has a near MVP season, like I think he could potentially have. But let me explain that real quick. We had Patrick Mahomes, Year 2, MVP. Lamar Jackson, Year 2, MVP. Josh Allen, Year 2. Put up MVP numbers. I mean, Aaron Rodgers had a phenomenal season, so that was tough to beat out. This year, I think that year two guy is going to be Jalen Hurts. So the Eagles are probably the team that even though they have the lack of talent, they probably have the most upside in terms of that lack of talent, if that makes sense. So once again, we have a week 14 bye week for the Eagles. Looking at these first 13 games, I think I see four games that I'm confident that they'll lose, which means nine are up in the air. So if I do what I've been doing and say that they win half of those games, they'd be sitting at five and eight going into their bye week, but I'm gonna add one more just because of the upside that I think they have. So I have them at six and seven going into their bye week. Now they don't play Washington for the first time until week 15 and then play turn around and play them again week 17. So I'm gonna play it a little safe on the Eagles and say that they're gonna go for eight wins, which is over the projected win total of six and a half. The Atlanta Falcons, a team that I think has the potential to compete for the worst record in the NFL once again this season. They lost Julio, which they didn't really have most of the season anyway because of injury, but I don't think they did really much of anything to make their team better. Mike Davis was an interesting pickup. I mean, he was the backup for Christian McCaffrey last year and did pretty well. And they also drafted Kyle Pitts. I think he's another player that could compete for Rookie of the Year. I think he's going to be phenomenal. So the Falcons have an early bye week, week six. So I'm just going to throw out that the Falcons will start the season two and three before their bye week. After that, it gets a little bit tougher. Um, the game against the Lions will go either way. The game against the Jaguars might go either way. I can see them winning three of these last 12 games. Uh, like I said, I just don't see their defense being able to help them out. I mean, Matt, Matt Ryan is still a solid NFL quarterback. But if he doesn't have help on the other side of the football, then this team is pretty much screwed. So I'm going to have the Falcons at five wins, which is under the projected win total of seven and a half games. And I think that seven and a half win total is pretty generous. Next up, we have the Washington football team. Uh, like I mentioned earlier with the Browns, uh, this team has one of the most dominant defensive lines in all of football. And even just forgetting about the defensive, like just forget about the defensive line for a second, but their actual defense is pretty solid too. Um, they do lack talent at the quarterback position. They did pick up Ryan Fitzpatrick. I could see them being one of the teams to sign Cam Newton, uh, since uh, Cam Newton's old coach Ron Rivera is there. But Fitzpatrick will probably remain the starter for, I would assume, most of the season. So I would say Washington is pretty similar to the Broncos in terms of having a very solid defense, but the lack of talent at the offensive position might come back to haunt them. And I do think Washington has a little bit worse of an offense than the Broncos do. So looking at their schedule, week nine bye week, that's about where I would want to buy a week, right in the middle of the season. Like their defense is going to cause a lot, I mean like probably every single one of these teams problems. It's just a matter of whether can, can they score enough points to keep up. This game against the Broncos would have the lowest projected score out of like any of the games this season. 
So for sure, I see them beating the Giants. I could see them beating the Chargers as well. Other than that, a couple of these games are going to be tough. I think they start the season three and five. That's being conservative. Coming out of their bye, they get a playoff rematch against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And if I were to play the Buccaneers, it would, I would want it to be coming off of a bye. So that could be interesting. You might see an upset there. The chances of that probably aren't likely, but it could happen. But if we look at the rest of the schedule, um, I don't think I said that they'd split the games against all of their division opponents. But the more I look at it, the more likely I think they could do it. So I think the Panthers are the only game that they win for sure. Uh, one of the Eagles games. So even though their defense is outstanding, I don't see them winning more than six games. They won seven last season. The projected win total is eight and a half. But uh, the schedule, I don't think really favors them. So I'm going to go with the Washington football team winning six games. Next up, we have the San Francisco 49ers, which last season coming off of a Super Bowl appearance, just got absolutely dismantled by injuries. Probably the most unlucky team in all of football. Everybody should be coming back. Everybody should be healthy. They have a solid roster. But again, we have a question mark at the quarterback position. How long is Garoppolo going to remain the starter? When is Trey Lance going to come in? We all know Trey Lance has a tremendous upside, but Garoppolo, he's made the Super Bowl in the last two seasons. 49ers have an early bye week going into week six. The Packers game could be tough. The Seahawks game could be tough. I think they lose one of those. So going into their bye week, I have them at five and one. I think the only team in the division that they beat twice is the Cardinals. So really, if I look at them losing, I only see them losing two games of this back half of the schedule. Um, but I'll throw in an extra one just because I'm not totally sure about the quarterback situation. That's the big key here. So I have them at 13 wins, which is over the projected win total of 10 and a half, just because I think there's enough talent on this roster that the quarterback situation won't hinder them too much. Next up, we have the New York Giants, and I thought this is another team that had the potential to break out this season, but um, going through most of these schedules up to this point, I've realized that probably is unlikely to happen. They have Saquon Barkley coming off a knee injury, so we, so there's some concerns there, even though players nowadays seem like they have no problem coming back from injuries like that. Um, Daniel Jones has the potential to break out going into his third season. So the Giants have a bye week in the middle of the season at week 10. So I do think the Giants will come last in the NFC East. Um, I went through the rest of their teams already and I don't think I had them winning many games against those teams. I could see them winning at most two of those. Like they could honestly start the season one and eight, but I do think they're a little bit better than that. Uh, I think we're gonna say they win three of the first nine games uh, yeah, I'm not really liking this last part of their schedule. Uh, I think they get one against the Eagles. So if they win the Eagles and one more, that puts them at five wins for the season. That kind of makes up for the optimism in the first half of the season. So either way, five wins is under the projected win total of seven games. Jacksonville Jaguars, a team that I think will be once again competing for last place in the league. Definitely drafting Trevor Lawrence first overall. That's going to help. And I can see that Madden hasn't updated the roster yet to get Minshew on the Eagles. I just noticed that. But, you know, Travis Etienne is going to be out for probably all of the season with a foot injury. James Robinson had an amazing season last season, so I'm not even sure why they drafted Etienne in the first place, other than he played with Trevor Lawrence in college. Not sure if that was the right decision for them, though. So the Jaguars' projected win total is set at six and a half games, which I think is very generous for a team coming off of one win. Yeah, they drafted Trevor Lawrence first overall, but I don't think they really made any major improvements to the roster other than signing Marvin Jones. So at week seven bye week, uh, the teams that I've mentioned so far in this video, I think I've had the Jaguars losing to all of them. I think the Jaguars will get one for sure against the Texans. The Texans are going to be the worst team in the league. I'm going to have a one and five going into their bye week. So um, on the generous side, I would say the Jaguars win three games, and they might even be better than I thought. So I would say four games. Uh, Trevor Lawrence could be better than I think he is, maybe lead the team to some more wins. So I'm going to say the Jaguars win four games, which is under the projected win total of six and a half. 
Um, that is another one of my most confident bets that the Jaguars would go under that projected win total of six and a half. Here we have the New York Jets, um, a team that I would say is very similar to the makeup of the Jaguars. Um, they have a few spots on defense that are, are pretty good. CJ Mosley, I think, was out the entire last season with an injury, so that should help them a little bit. Uh, the wide receiver core, they got Corey Davis, Jamison Crowder's coming back, and Elijah Moore, I think, is somebody that has tremendous upside as a rookie. And speaking of rookie, can't forget to talk about the number two overall pick in the NFL draft, Zach Wilson. He looked like he was pretty good in the preseason. So just looking at the roster, the Jets have even less talent than what the Jaguars do, in my opinion. Bruh. So out of the Jets' first five games, uh, I think, you know, a little bit easier than what other teams would have. The Panthers game is interesting. It's a Sam Darnold revenge game, so I don't think the Jets win that one. I don't know. I don't, I don't think the Jets have enough talent to win any of these games, honestly. So I'd just have them start at 0-5. Probably win against the Texans, but I think, I don't know, these two are probably going to be the worst two teams. The Jets are projected to win six games, and I just don't see it. Uh, I think they'll be lucky to win three of them. So I'm going to say uh, the Jets win three games. I remember being high on them last year. I think I projected that they win like seven games last season. But... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to make that mistake again. They're going to go under six, and that's another uh, solid bet that I would want to make. Detroit Lions. Yeah, I just said the Jets and Texans would be the worst two teams in the league. Well, this team has the potential as well. Uh, they made that huge trade. Um, traded Matt Stafford for Jared Goff and some picks. Uh, so I think that could pay off for them in the long run. The receiving core is kind of atrocious. They do have one of the best tight ends in the league in TJ Hawkinson. Uh, other than that, their defense isn't really that great. Their entire team isn't that great, and it's not a good sign when you're looking at the top seven players of a Madden roster and you see a punter listed. So the Lions don't have a bye till week nine. Like, Jared Goff was a very mediocre quarterback in Los Angeles with the Rams, and he does have a revenge game week seven, but he had his the talent that they surrounded him with was just insane, so it was easy for that. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, the Lions go 0-8 through the first eight weeks. Could they really go 0-17? There's no way. So if I go back and so say they might beat the Bengals, they might they might win a division game. So they might like they one game I feel better about than the others. So um, yeah, I'm gonna say that the Lions win only two games this season. Uh, it's under their projected win total of four and a half. They'd be lucky if they got to four wins. All right, after having four straight bad teams, we're back to a potential Super Bowl contender in the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers decided to come back, and it's probably a good thing he did because I think the Packers Super Bowl window, I mean, they're, they're in the Super Bowl window right now. This is probably one of the best teams that he's been surrounded with, honestly. The Packers don't have a bye week until week 13, and they do have a pretty tough schedule. Uh, the game against the 49ers could probably go either way. The game against the Chiefs could go either way. And the game against the Rams could probably go either way. So in that case, I would say that the Packers will start their season off 10-2, and two, which that's already at their projection of 10 wins for the season. I don't know why it's so low. And then I would assume that they get upset by one of the teams in their division once. The game against the Ravens could be tough. The game against the Browns, the Browns would be tough. But I think we're looking at... For sure 12 wins, maybe 13 wins to match their win total from last season, and they have an extra game to do it. So I'd say over 10 wins, 13 is my prediction. That's probably another uh, one of the best bets that you can make. So I've noticed so far that I've had a lot of teams like under like six wins, and then I've had an, a lot of teams over 13 wins. The Panthers, I think, are going to be one of the few teams that finish in between that at least uh right now looking at the roster christian mccaffrey coming off of an injury plagued season sam darnold uh, i think he's gonna break out of his shell now that he's in a new situation a new environment surrounded by a little bit better talent than what he had in new york he gets reunited with robbie anderson he kind of helped robbie anderson burst onto the scene and dj moore is another top wide receiver talent so Panthers have a week 13 bye. Uh, their first part of the schedule I think is pretty easy for them. Uh, the Jets, Texans, potentially the Eagles, 
Giants, Falcons, and then probably one of these four teams. So that's six wins right there. So six and six going into the bye week. Then they play the Falcons again. They should be able to beat the Falcons twice, I would assume. Then they do play the Buccaneers twice at the end of the year. That's not a good sign. And the Bills. So the last four games, are, I think, would be pretty tough for them. They might even, uh, back up here, they might even beat the Saints. So this is probably the hardest prediction to make because their projected win total is at seven and a half wins. And I want to go either seven wins or eight wins. But what it comes down to is like the potential. Um, I think they have the potential to lose more games than to win more games. So I'm going to say that they win seven games and go under, but that's uh, definitely the toughest one that I've had to predict so far. The new New England Patriots. Um, so I guess Madden hasn't updated the roster to let Cam Newton go yet. So we'll have to see if we can get that fixed before the season starts. But Mac Jones is the guy in New England. I'm pretty sure Stephon Gilmore is on the players unable to perform list to start the season. So I'm not sure why he's listed with an injury, without an injury. Um, so Madden's kind of lacking behind here. But this is another one of those teams that I expect to be very close to average, similar to what the Panthers were. Um, I, I do see them splitting the series against the Dolphins. They'll win both of the games against the Jets, probably lose both games against the Bills. But uh, the games for sure, the Jets, Texans, Jets, probably the Chargers, maybe the Panthers. I think that was a, one of the tweeners I had for the last one. They'll probably get the Falcons. So that could be five or six games going into their bye week. They'll get Stephon Gilmore back week seven. So going into their bye week, I would say they'd be at six wins. I honestly could see them winning three of their last four. So if they go nine and nine, uh, that puts them under the projected win total of nine and a half. So I think under isn't a bad bet to make because I think they have the potential to do worse than nine wins. The Las Vegas Raiders, the last team to talk about from the AFC West, the team that I think got better in the off season. They've got a pretty solid running back duo with Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drakes. I wonder if they'll rely on the run game a little bit more this year. Uh, I think Henry Ruggs is a huge breakout candidate. This might be the third team in a row. Yeah, this is going to be the third team in a row. I'm going to say this, but this is a team I could see being very average this year. So without looking at the schedule just yet, I have the Broncos at eight wins. I have the Chargers at eight wins. I expect the Raiders to be around there, uh, if not slightly above, because I do think they should come out as second in the AFC West. But let's see. So bye week, week eight. I think I had them splitting with the Chargers and Broncos. And then they might even get a Chiefs scheme because it seems like every year they play the Chiefs really close. So I think in their division, they go three and three. And then I think the Steelers game, the Dolphins game, the Bears game, the Eagles game, they're all toss ups. The only game for sure that I'd have them losing here is the Ravens. So that's three and four through the first seven weeks. I think there's a potential though to go four and three. So I'm gonna say four and three at the bye week. And then wins against the Giants, Bengals for sure. And then there's more toss-ups with the Cowboys, Washington. So for some reason, the Raiders are projected lower than the Chargers and the Broncos with only seven wins. But like I said, I think that they finished second in the AFC West. Um, I will put them at nine wins for the season, which is over the projected win total of seven. Next up, we have the Los Angeles Rams, who I think has a talent level close to what the Chiefs have. Like they have a couple two all pro superstar players, a very average team, kind of similar to the Buccaneers. I said before, it's a bad sign if you see a punter in your top seven players, but Johnny Hecker is one of the best punters in the league. So there's an exception for that. Rams traded for Matt Stafford. Um, I, I can't, when's the last time the Rams have had a first round pick, honestly? But uh, Cam Akers will be out for the season with an injury. They traded for Sonny Michelle, Daryl Henderson Jr. Uh, I think these two will be just fine. It's not gonna be as solid as what Cam Akers was for him. But their wide receiver core, uh, I think Woods and Cup for sure will have fair, like even better seasons than what they had last year with Stafford. And the Rams defense has been great the last few years. So the Rams don't have a buy until week 11. 
Uh, they are in the toughest division, or at least what I expect to be the toughest division this year. But they do have an easy, they do have a pretty easy start to the season against the Bears and Colts. Uh, the Buccaneers will be tough. Uh, they should be able to beat the Cardinals both times. They'll split the series against the Seahawks and 49ers. So looking at for sure wins through the first 10 games, I think seven and three is very realistic for the Rams going into their bye week. Uh, I'll have a tough one against the Packers, but coming off a of bye week, I think that might help them. So I would almost lean towards the Rams taking that one. So I think the Rams easily get over their projected win total of 10 and a half games. I'm gonna throw out the number of 12 as my prediction for the Rams this season. The Baltimore Ravens, another team that has one of the best rosters in the league. Very solid defense, very solid offense. One of the best dual threat quarterbacks in Lamar Jackson. The only thing that they don't have going for them right now is they lost J.K. Dobbins, who doesn't have an injury designation in this either. What the hell? That happened like a week ago. And they did pick up Sammy Watkins. If he can stay healthy, uh, then that'll be good for Marquise Brown who I think if he wasn't the number one option, he will succeed in this offense. But if Sammy Watkins gets hurt, like he usually does, uh, this receiving core isn't very good. They do have Mark Andrews at tight end, but he also has injury concerns as well. The Ravens rely on the running game anyway, so it shouldn't be a problem even with J.K. Dobbins out. So I think the... So the Ravens have a bye week, week eight, as you can see here. So um, through the first seven games, I think five or even six of those are easily winnable for them. They'll lose the Chiefs game for sure. The Raiders one is gonna to be tough, but after the Chiefs game, I think they easily win all five of those. So I'm gonna go with the Ravens at six and one going into the bye week. But then you gotta keep in mind, we know Lamar Jackson isn't vaccinated. He's been on the COVID list twice in the past two seasons already. Well, this season hasn't even started and he's been on the COVID list. So could that be a cause of concern? I think it can be, but I'm gonna treat this, like there's no way to predict What's gonna happen with that? There's no way to predict injuries. I'm just gonna go off of what I see on paper. Uh, Vikings, Dolphins, Browns, Steelers on the road, Browns again on the road, Packers. The last part of the schedule kind of sucks. I think they for sure win four of their last 10 games. Um, I think they have the potential to lose against the Browns, Steelers, Browns, Packers, like four games in a row. Which doesn't seem right, but that's a very strong possibility. So if they win half of their last few games, they'll finish at 10 and seven, which I think this, I don't know, I think that's a pretty bold prediction, but I have the Ravens finishing under 11 wins. You could make the argument for 11, but with the way their schedule is, uh, and since their projection is 11, I think there's more potential for the total to be under than over. Next, we have another question mark going into this season. The New Orleans Saints, uh, they have a very similar roster to what they had last season, with the exception of Drew Brees going out and Jameis Winston probably going to be taking over as a starting quarterback. I can't remember if they've announced that already or not. But uh, they'll definitely use Taysom Hill still. They used him most of last season and had Jameis Winston uh, as a backup. But uh, I think Jameis Winston, he's gonna have a huge bounce back season. Like other than Jalen Hurts, I would have Winston as, uh, as being up there in terms of players breaking out. He's got a solid running back in Alvin Kamara. Uh, his receiving squad doesn't look that great right now. because Michael Thomas is gonna be out for at least the first six weeks. But uh, Marquez Callaway, I'm huge on him. He had an outstanding preseason. Their defense, I think, is going to be very underrated going into this season. But so many of these teams are dependent on what's going to happen at the quarterback position. There's so many unknowns. So, so far through the schedule, I think I've had the Saints as kind of a tweener. Like, you know, they might win games against the Saints. They might not win games against the Saints. But looking at the first five weeks here, probably lose to the Packers. But... These four games after that, definitely winnable. So I'd say three and two, four and one, depending on what the rest of the schedule looks like. Uh, coming out of their bye to the Seahawks and Buccaneers, I would say for sure two against the Falcons, one against the Panthers, the Jets, the Giants. So out of 17 games, only five for sure. Then I think there's only three that they won't win. And all the other ones are up to chance. The projected win total is sitting at nine games. And I think nine wins 
is a big possibility here just because of the coaching and just because of my prediction of Jameis Winston having an outstanding season. I'm going to go to 10 wins for the Saints, which is over their projected win total of nine games. Uh, I think nine or 10 wins is for sure there. All right, so we only have five teams left. Next up, the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks are one of those teams that have been relevant for a really long time. Um, I expect them to do so even though they're in the toughest division in football this year. Russell Wilson played like an MVP for the first part of the season last year and then kind of hit a rough stretch. But his weapons are there. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Chris Carson. All of those guys are great. Their defense has kind of fallen off in recent seasons. They were able to extend Jamal Adams' contract. So he should be happy. But yeah, this team should be competing for a playoff spot with the 49ers and the Rams in that division. So the Seahawks have a bye week nine. And the first part of their schedule I think is pretty easy for them. Um, wow. Titans game might be a little difficult. Uh, I think they'll split the series against the Rams and 49ers, maybe even the Cardinals, I'm not sure. So going into their bye week, I have them at six and two. I would say they lose to two of the three Titans, 49ers, or Rams in the first eight weeks. So six and two going into their bye week. Game against the Packers is tough. Coming off a of bye week, that might help them. Yeah, so their schedule is pretty favorable. Because they play the Texans, they play the Lions, and they play the Jaguars. So that's three of the worst teams right there. So I think the Seahawks have a potential to win up to 13 games this season. But I think the lack of... Uh, an all-around defense might cost him a few games and if Russell Wilson had a fall off similar to what he had last season even though it wasn't really like a huge fall off he just didn't play as well as he did early on but um, either way I'm confident that the Seahawks go over and I'm gonna say they go to 12 games which is over the projection of 10 wins the Pittsburgh Steelers had a little bit better of a year than I thought they would last season but they ended up not having any sort of luck in the playoffs. Uh, they got, I think the Browns put up like 48 points on them and what was like one of the highest scoring playoff games ever. But Ben Roethlisberger's back. It'll be interesting to see if there's any sort of fall off with him. They lost James Conner, drafted Najee Harris. Um, their wide receiver core is one of the best in the league with Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, and Chase Claypool. And then um, the biggest question mark for them is their offensive line. Probably one of the worst offensive lines in the league. But the defense is solid. The defense will help them win some games alone. But with the threat of losing Roethlisberger to potential injury from being sacked, he'll probably get sacked the most out of any quarterback in the league. All right, so the Steelers have a bye week, week seven. Um, they're another one of those teams where I think they have a lot of games that could go either way. They'll probably lose for sure three of the first six. The game against the Raiders will probably go either way. But uh, I would say just from the talent alone that they have, I would say three and three through the first six weeks. And then the last five, six weeks of the season, a lot of those games could, be, could go either way. Their offensive line, even though the offensive line does have me concerned, I think the Steelers are going to be able to easily go over their 8.5 projected win total. And uh, 9 or 10 wins would be a strong possibility. I'm going to throw out the number 10 because they do have a lot of playmakers on the team. It's just going to come down to whether or not the offensive line can hold up for them or not. So next up, the Houston Texans. Ignore Deshaun Watson up top there because there's no way he's going to be playing this season. Uh, yeah, this team... Most likely you'd be the worst team in the league. They'll have Tyrod Taylor starting. He's been very decent uh, NFL quarterback. Uh, maybe very below average is the term for that. Um, they'll have a three-headed running back committee. Maybe even four with Rex Burkett. I didn't even realize he was on the team. So now that I think of it, I don't think I had the Texans winning any game so far that I've predicted. But the ones that they have the best shot of winning would be the Jaguars. Jets, Jaguars, and then they might upset a team along the way in a 17 game season. But uh, yeah, even though their over under win total is projected at four games, 
Um, yeah, you can take the very, very, very off chance that Deshaun Watson ends up being cleared to play. That will probably get him over the four, uh, four game win total alone. But um, yeah, I don't feel good about them winning any of these games, but I'm sure they'll at least win one or two. So I'm gonna say two wins uh, at most. I'd be shocked if they win more than that without Deshaun Watson. Like I said, even though four is a very low win total, I think betting the under on that is one of the best bets you can make this season. The Tennessee Titans. This is probably the most interesting one out of all of them because their projected win total is only at nine games. They won 11 the last season and they've been pretty consistent the last few seasons. And they made one of the best trades in the off season. Uh, to get Julio Jones. I think the biggest question mark comes from other than Kevin Byer, their secondary, like their corners, but their offense is loaded enough that I think outscoring opponents is a good strategy for them. Like playing fast, putting points on the board, putting pressure on other teams. However, I did say, you know, it's hard to predict injuries or, you know, COVID list stuff, but Derrick Henry, his, he's got to break down at some point, right? Like he's been... He's been the workhorse the last few seasons now. You gotta think uh, the Miles are gonna start catching up to him. So the Titans were another one of those teams I had kind of going either way with most of these matchups here. Well, the ones that they can for sure get are Colts, Jets, Jags, probably will get the Cardinals. Um, week 13 bye week, they'll get Patriots, Texans. So they do have a pretty tough uh, schedule. The Seahawks are gonna be tough, the Bills are gonna be tough, the Chiefs are gonna be tough, the Rams are gonna be tough. Saints could go either way. So going into their bye week, I think seven and five is a very strong possibility. But with the talent that they have on offense, I think that's a little too low. So I'm gonna bump that up to eight and four. In the last five games of the season, they should get at least two wins from the Jaguars and Texans. Uh, they might be able to, the Steelers and Dolphins will go either way. The 49ers, I'm not so sure about. They're in what I think is gonna be a bad division. Uh, I think they'll easily go above their win total. It's just a question of how far above it they'll go. But I'm gonna go with 10 wins for them, just to play it safe, but I think 11 or even more is a strong possibility, so bet the over on that one. And the last team we have here, the Minnesota Vikings. Last year was kind of a disappointing season for them with only seven wins, even though Kirk Cousins had one of his best seasons as, uh, I it's probably his best season as a quarterback in the NFL. Um, Dalvin Cook, one of the best running backs in the NFL. Thielen and Jefferson, the best, one of the best uh, wide receiver duos in the NFL. They have a pretty solid defense. I think the biggest concern would be offensive line. Um, their offensive line doesn't seem to be that deep. All right, so the Vikings have a bye week, week seven. Uh, the first six weeks are probably the easiest that they're gonna have. Uh, the Cardinals and Seahawks and Browns will be tough. I think four and two is a strong possibility. Uh, with wins against the Bengals, Lions, and Panthers probably. And then uh, I think they could probably get a win against the Cardinals as well. So I'm having four and two for the Vikings through six weeks, but that's when things get tough for them. The Cowboys game, Ravens game, definitely questionable. The Chargers game, they have a good shot of winning and the Lions. But other than that, the rest of their schedule is pretty tough. I think they'll lose to the Packers twice. They'll split the series with the Bears. So this is another one of those teams that has a projected win total right about where I'd want uh, at the split between nine and eight wins. Um, considering they only won seven games last year and I don't think they really did anything to improve their team, uh, I would lean towards eight wins for the season and taking the under. Um, I mean, the Packers are gonna beat them twice. I think the Bears would be a tough opponent for them. And then the back half of their schedule is just really tough. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with eight wins and the under for the Vikings. So, looking at my sheet here, I have 17 teams under, 15 teams over. I feel like that's about right where I want. I don't know if the win totals will add up to the actual number of games, but I'm not going to worry about that. So, it is now time to simulate through the 2021-2022 NFL season. This doesn't mean anything, because remember last year in my simulation, the Bengals won the Super Bowl, and they ended up winning only four games. Uh, so we're gonna quickly go through it, I think, advancing to the regular season here. 
and then I'm gonna have to put Deshaun Watson or take him off the depth chart. And then there are some other teams that had injuries that weren't updated on the roster. So I don't think I'm able to do that in this because I can't control every single team. So the simulation won't be, I mean, it wasn't gonna be super accurate anyway, but even less knowing that there's players with injuries that are going to be playing the entire season. So what we're gonna do here is simulate to the halfway point of the season, look at the division standings, then simulate to the end of the season, look at the division standings and who made the playoffs. Then we'll simulate the playoffs to the Super Bowl and then simulate the Super Bowl, see what happens. And then look at the awards for the season. Okay, here we are at the halfway point in the season. As you can see, the Rams kind of underperforming and the Texans overperforming my expectations. All right, so this is already a little bit more realistic than last season with the Chiefs and Buccaneers at the top, but then you have the Broncos and Jaguars with only one loss. So checking the division stands, oh, we got the, Madden must love the Bengals for some reason, but this division's tightly contested. Jags are winning the AFC South as of now. Patriots, the Bills are one in five, there's no way. Chargers are 0 six, like that's hard to believe too. Bears dominating this division, all the other teams have only one win. Like, I don't even know why I'm even bothering to do this other than that it's hilarious that it's turning out the way it is. I mean, this I, this is probably the most reasonable one, except the Falcons, I don't think will have that many wins. Um, this one is okay, like I'm really high on the Eagles, so that could easily happen. This is pretty even, except the Rams are doing worse than I would have thought right now. Well, let's see what happens at the end of the season. So here we are at the end of the regular season. Let's see if the standings kind of even themselves out here. Okay, this looks a little better. I mean, the Chiefs, that hits spot on with my prediction. Same thing with the Browns. Um, but I can already see the Falcons made the playoffs, the Bengals made the playoffs, the Broncos made the playoffs. Patriots won the division. Colts won their division, Titans got in, Bears won their division, and Saints got a spot, and oh, the Rams also clinched, so the Panthers and Dolphins look like they're the first two teams out. So let's check the standings here. AFC North, I just don't, there's no way the Bengals win 11 games. Like this is just the same thing as last season, like they somehow made the playoffs. Um, let's see, the Colts and Titans come out, at, so I, I mean, I did have the Titans at 10 games, but the Colts, I, I could see it if, you know, if Carson wins had a good year. Patriots winning the division. The Pills have finished worse than the Jets, so that's that's not gonna happen. Um, the Raiders and Chargers are absolutely horrible. The Packers almost came back to contend, but if the Packers finish under 500 with Aaron Rodgers at the helm, like all the teams in the NFC South finish positive, that's crazy. Definitely don't see the Falcons doing that well. And then, you know, this could be expected for the NFC East, um, depending on how you feel about the Eagles. This is the division that I thought was going to be most tightly contested. Uh, the Seahawks take that one away. The Rams still make a playoff spot. Uh, I'd be shocked if all of these, both well, these three teams didn't make the playoffs. So just looking at this, Tyrod Taylor finished fifth in passing yards, almost had 5,000 passing yards. I guess we'll quickly run through this here. I guess I forgot there's an extra game now, so that'll give him a chance to throw more yards. But Tom Brady with the league leader by six over Mahomes. Kaepernick, who's not even on a team right now, finishes third. And yeah, somebody must be a Bengals fan because Burrow is fourth. Hey, and Justin Fields took over. Rushing yards, Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry. Yeah, no surprises there. Receiving yards, Antonio Brown and Tyrell Williams. Now, I drafted him on my fantasy team. He fell to me uh, at the very end of the draft even though he's the number one receiver for the Lions. Like, I don't think that's gonna happen, but that'd be awesome if it did. But Anthony Miller for the Texans? So Christian McCaffrey was the league MVP, barely beating out Dak Prescott. All right, here is the playoff bracket for the season. Got the Chiefs and Cowboys with the first round buys. Uh, I don't really know what to expect here because it's just like, it's basically a coin flip with Madden. So let's go ahead and, and simulate to the Super Bowl. And Super Bowl 56, the Bears and the Patriots. Mac Jones versus Justin Fields. Oh, yikes. Okay, so the winner of Super Bowl 56, the champion of this upcoming NFL season, the New England Patriots, the second year without Tom Brady, first year with Mac Jones, win 24 to six. 
Oh, that's right, because I forgot I forgot about Cam Newton. He wasn't released. I forgot Cam Newton was still on the team. <laughs> if the roster was updated, he wouldn't have been on a team. So, Patriots fans, if you're out there watching, your team made a huge mistake according to Madden. Because if you would have had Cam Newton, you would have won the Super Bowl this season. Now that he's gone, it's just not going to happen. And Bears fans, Justin Fields takes over. You're going to make the Super Bowl, according to Madden. There's no way that actually happens. With that being said, I guess that does it for the video. Um, once again, another very unrealistic uh, result to the simulation for the second year in a row. But if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Uh, my freelancing schedule is uh, starting to run dry by the end of the month. So hopefully I'll be uploading more content like this. Uh, with 2k coming out next week and streaming more often so be sure to subscribe to not miss out on any of that and finally comment down below your predictions for the nfl season what you thought of my predictions what you thought my most outrageous takes were uh, and give me your most outrageous take and prediction uh ignore everything that happened in the simulation it's just for fun because there's no way any of it happens but thanks for watching see you guys